Elton Harrington Show. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> you said that good. Elton Harrington, there'll never be no comparison. You're live on the show. Sit back and have a listen. All right, all right. LDB said this your boy, Coach Elton Harrington. You're live on the show. Sit back and have a listen. All right, all right. LDB said this your boy, Coach Elton Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Elton Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, folks. Hey, listen, man. I wanted to go ahead and start talking about this one. Uh, Megan Anderson made some uh, comments on Twitter that, you know, I, I definitely agree with. And I'm going to break this down. You see, y'all, I don't want to get into this video saying that I told you so, but I did, okay? I told you what the game plan for Team Anderson was. The game plan is survival. And Megan Anderson, she took one for the team. Because Megan desperately wants a 145-pound division built in the UFC. And it was her dream to be a UFC fighter. And Megan was willing to do or take whatever fight she had to to become that. And, you know, more fighters, Jermaine Durandame, need to have that mindset that she wants to be champion. I think that Megan will fight hard. And I think Megan knows that, you know, she's at a disadvantage. And in my opinion, I don't think Megan thinks that she'll actually win this particular fight. But I think that she's doing this in order to get the 145 pound division there. And you know, I, I can't I can't do nothing, man, but give the girl props for taking this tough fight. To me, early in her career, and to me, I still say early, yes, she's 27, but there's a lot. Megan is still young in this game. She's still young. And I was dead set against this fight in the beginning. And me, you know what, if I had it my way, I would have signed as many 145 pounders as I could. If I was the UFC, I would have had Megan and Chris Cyborg running through all these girls on a collision course. See, that would have made a whole lot more dollars and cents if you talk about the money. That's what I would have did. I would have had Megan and Chris running through as many of these girls as I can until they get on a collision course. That's what they should have did, man. But see, you know, instead of trying to, you know, preserve the division, the division would be, it'll be healthy. And then you'll get a lot more people that will want to fight in that division, regardless if Chris Cyborg is there or not. But Megan Anderson said to hell with it. I want to be a UFC fighter. I'm going to fight Chris Cyborg. I can't knock Megan for this. And, you know, you got to give Megan praise. You got to, you, you can't say that this girl, you know, you can't say she afraid. I can't say she afraid anymore. I cannot. Okay. I think Megan knows, look, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to give it my best effort. I might not win, but guess what? You know, I'm going to put the 145-pound division on the map, okay? And you never know. You know, see, this is MMA, okay? The chances of Megan winning are very, very low, but this is MMA, okay? Anything could happen. And the one weakness I will say that Cyborg has is that she can be submitted. Chris can be submitted. It's just you got to catch at the right moment. That's it. You know, and I'm not saying Megan is completely out. There, there is a chance. There is a fighter's chance that Megan could win this fight. It's low, but it's there. But let me go ahead and read a statement that Megan said that I, I agree with, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, Megan said, I definitely think the UFC created this division around one person, uh, Chris Cyborg. But unfortunately, I don't think she is someone you can build around. Anderson said, as dominant as she's been, she doesn't have the other aspects it takes that um, I do. Okay, and I think that I think by signing a multi-fight agreement, okay, say worst case scenario, it doesn't work out as planned on July 29th and the UFC cuts me. That would just reiterate that they're not in, invested in 145 pounds. So I think whatever the UFC's plan is for me, whether I win or lose this fight, will show how they view this division. Guys, this is what I've been saying. I told y'all. I told y'all exactly what Megan was saying. I told y'all. Megan, like, look, okay, I'm going to get in this fight with this with this monster of a fighter. I'm going to fight this girl, and I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to just swing for the fences. But I don't think that me, I don't think that they believe that they could actually win this particular fight. I think that she's going to go in there. I think she's going to give it everything she got. I think Megan going to press attack from start. I don't, I don't think me, Megan probably is going to try to pressure Cyborg. I, I can see Megan going in there and just saying, hell, forget it. I'm going to hit a win. And she's going to swing for the fences. You see, but see, here's the thing. And I agree with Megan. The UFC, they created this division around Cyborg. And I don't think, I don't, it's not going to work. Because number one, you know, you got Cyborg wrecking these girls. And she's putting these girls up on this wall of destruction. 
And if you're a manager of a fighter, man, yeah, that's not going to make you too happy. Like, oh, crap, I got to get in here and then have my fighter wreck, you know, for six to eight months. I mean, you know, yeah, they, they do come back. They come back, but see, they don't come back, you know, as fast as these managers want. Because some of these managers want these fighters. You know, they want them fighting, you know, three, you know, three and four times a year. Some managers do. Three at the most, two at the less. But if you got your fighter that's fighting maybe once a year, well, you know, when them fighters don't fight, the managers don't make money. And so, you know, you got to think about it. And also, too, you know, Chris Cyborg don't have the microphone skills. I mean, I'm going to put it out there. Chris Cyborg is not. She's not a good trash talker. It's just all Chris Cyborg know how to do is beat people's ass. That's it. Megan Anderson kind of has a little bit of everything. Megan can go in there and whoop your ass. Then she can get on the microphone and say she whooped your ass. And then she can get on a post-fight press conference and talk about how bad she whooped your ass. See, that's the difference. And Megan herself. Yeah, she does have that look. But Megan also got the microphone skills. And, and you gotta, y'all gotta, you got to understand this. And people, they hate Ronda Rousey so much. I'm not a Ronda Rousey fan, but man, you got to admire Ronda how she on the microphone. The microphone skills. And, and guys, I can't say enough of that. If you're a fighter, you got to have it all. See, if you just got microphone skills, but then you get your ass whooped in, in the octagon, well, that ain't gonna that ain't gonna matter. You can go and beat up everybody you want to, but that's not gonna make you. It's gonna make you popular, but it's not gonna make you the star that you need to be. See, Megan Anderson know how to talk junk on the mic. She's good at it. It's her thing. I mean, the girl could easily be a WWE wrestler. I mean, she can do it because the girl know how to get on that microphone, and she know how to get people either loving her or hating her. She know how to do it. And that's why I'm a fan. I be wanting to know what Megan going to say next. But y- y'all got to admit, when she told Jermaine and Holly and Dana, keep my belt warm because I'm coming for you. That was funny, man. That was funny. I laughed, man. I laughed. And I-, I even made a video on that one. But Megan is definitely, she- she's what's needed. See, the 145-pound division need a Megan Anderson. Because Megan, you know, in face-off, she going to talk junk. In a pre-fight press conference, is Megan going to be talking that jump? I mean, that's what you need to help this sport grow. And I, I, my, Megan is taking one for the team. She's taking one so this division in the UFC can flourish, okay? That's what she's doing. And in her mind, if I win this fight or lose this fight, I still win. Megan's thought, look, I just got to put up a good fight. I just got to put up a good fight. I got to do enough in this fight to make people realize, hey, this 145 pound division needs to be here but hopefully after this fight they let Megan and they sign a bunch of women and then they let Megan and Chris fight these women again okay let them fight and then let these two go on a collision course okay because by then Megan done had three or four more fights and Chris done had about two or three more fights and Megan's skill set will have already increased see this is what I see for the division this is how it work but I know they'll look at my video and take the idea, but, eh, you know, it is what it is, okay? But you guys tell me what you think. Shout out to Megan Anderson. And Megan is working her ass off, y'all. I mean, look, man. I mean, do you you see, like, Megan ain't, she's not playing. She's not taking this fight lightly. Megan is going in here to put, you know, hands on Chris Cyborg. That's what she's finna do. But this is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harris. And I'm done. What are you guys waiting on? Subscribe to the best women's MMA platform on YouTube.